welcome in to the PHNX Suns podcast brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's number one sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Lindsay Smith here with Gerald Borgay and Espo. Gentlemen, today's question of the day comes after a very fun outing the PHNX crew had yesterday at the Ice Den. We played a little, a friendly game of broom ball, if you will. I want to know, did you learn anything new about your coworkers after playing broom ball yesterday? Yeah, that my three co-hosts are the who, the hers. <laughs> to be fair, the bar is set no very low for me. I was picked last, okay? So the fact that I even <laughs> showed up is enough. <laughs> oh, you were tough defensively until that last play, but uh, <sighs> Gerald just can't hang in the goal. I, I played the whole game, get the win. Gerald's got to, you know, bail out after, what did you give up, two goals, and then you're like, I'm out, I'm done? I gave up two goals, and I was pulled. I can't pass myself the ball, Espo. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I choked hard at the end, and I literally busted my butt hard when the other team scored the winning goal. It was so embarrassing. But I did learn that Espo and Derek will literally sacrifice their bodies for a W. I'm surprised the two of you are able to walk today. I don't know if Derek's was by choice. <laughs> I think it was just sacrificing to sacrifice. Mine was by choice, and I am a highly competitive individual. Uh, that may come as a surprise, but I will pretty much do anything in that kind of situation. Like, as I got older, I knew I wasn't going to be real great at basketball, but I'd take a damn charge like a, like a champ. And yesterday in goal uh, – I learned that ice is a lot harder than you than you remember it is when you hit it, uh, you know, when you're playing goalie. Yes, absolutely. Did you learn anything else, Gerald? That my body is much more frail than it used to be. <laughs> I took one took one fall on my ass, and like my neck, shoulders, like back, upper back are just they're dead today. I think it's because of whiplash from how hard I hit my <laughs> head after I fell. But we're struggling today, that's for sure. Uh I did learn one thing. The mustache behind the Mac, our producer Shane Diefenbach actually played hockey mm -hmm. back in the day. And we know this because he wore his jersey to play broom ball. So congrats to, <laughs> Shane to Shane for finding a reason to uh, humble brag. You know, He legitimately <laughs> tried to like me last night during this mm -hmm. game. I Every bruise on my body, and there's at least four of them, came at the stick of Shane. So I got to be nicer to Shane moving forward. Not as bad as Saul, you know, a, a large man, uh, checking our 5'8", 115-pound <laughs> producer, Emma, into the boards <laughs> legitly. So he's, he's in the penalty box. That's why he's not here today because of that. <laughs> well, I highly recommend you guys check out this game. It was so, so, so much fun. And the Ice Den also has a really cool deal for you guys right now. Two-hour summer public skate sessions for only $10 per skater. So visit Ice Den scottsdale.com slash public dash skating and icedenchandler.com slash public dash skating if you want to check it out. All right, guys, more news on the Suns have, has come out today. The athletic Sam Amick has officially shared a report on the COVID rumors that we have been discussing over the last handful of days. So he basically shared that, yeah, there was COVID going on within this organization on the player's side, the coaching side, staff side, it was there. So. Yeah, I mean, like we talked about yesterday, I had heard from a few people, but nothing concrete. As Sam got six sources that confirmed that it was uh, going around the sun. Sounds like it's been potentially a problem around the NBA throughout these playoffs. Look, it's not, it's not a full excuse. We talked about this a lot yesterday. It's not a full excuse as to what has uh, what happened in that series it's one part of a much larger puzzle it's a piece of it and a substantial piece because we know what covid can do uh to people and how it can wear them down so it could explain some of it but it doesn't explain everything that went on with this team and why they struggled in the pelican series or why there were arguments on the sideline you know, it's not an excuse. What it really bothers me is right now you're getting Dallas reporters who are trying to spin this as if the Suns are making excuses for why they lost. Nobody from the Suns would confirm this because 
it's a bad look. You're not using this as an excuse because you sidestepped the spirit of the the rules that the NBA have in place right now to continue playing, right? So you're not, this is an excuse they're trying to use as to why they lost. This is something that came out because of good reporting by Sam Amick. And, and nobody's trying to just prop that up as, oh, that's why and the only reason why they lost to the Mavs. But for me, the bigger problem here, and some people may not agree with this, and, and quite frankly, that's your right. I don't uh, that you can think what you want, but this is on the NBA. The NBA allowed enough vagueness in their rules where players could continue to play, even if they felt sick. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. Maybe it was flu-like symptoms that a that a player played through. Uh, and they allowed it. And it's part of NBA lore, too. It's, oh, Michael Jordan's flu game. Like, th- it's a badge of honor sometimes uh, to play sick. And and I don't like that the NBA allowed the, the vagueness enough where you could put a team in a situation where they go out there like that. You know, I, I, I get it, but I would have much rather had some buffers built into the schedule to allow for players to admit that they were sick pause the series for a day or two, try to figure out if they can get that second negative like Al Horford did to come back and play. Look, my overall takeaway with this is that this whole thing sucks. Like there's no way it may make you feel a little bit better in terms of what transpired in games three through seven of that series. But the fact of the matter is they still got beat four out of five times. So even if we're taking game six and seven into account, as far as maybe there were some staffers and some players that were affected by this, like even that can only make you feel so much better about what we saw in the second round. I agree with the idea. Like it's moronic to think that the Suns leaked this story themselves to somehow exonerate their game seven performance. Yeah. Cause the players really want to be known and slandered by everyone for playing with COVID and putting other people in danger. That makes a ton of sense. But my biggest thing is like, this is something that everyone involved has to own. Like this is on the Suns players who, you know, didn't have to report anything or didn't have to, there was no mandatory testing. But if you're not feeling well, that's still on you to get tested. It's irresponsible to play the game of basketball with this still going around, especially if you're having symptoms. It's on the organization for not having players getting tested if they are showing signs of symptoms. And it's definitely on the league, like Espo mentioned, for having such lax rules Like, how are you going to have the playoffs without mandatory testing? This always struck me as weird. And it's even worse now that they're just letting people operate on this honor system that basically like, well, if you're not feeling well, then you should come forward and get tested. Like, these guys are ultra competitors and it doesn't let them off the hook for, you know, playing through COVID or playing through symptoms. But like, these guys aren't going to want to let their teammates down. There's millions of dollars at stake. In the Suns case, there's a 64-win season on the line. Do you really think any of these guys are going to willingly submit if they're not being forced to take these mandatory daily tests that we used to see with the league? It just feels like a reflection of everybody has gotten too lax with this thing. Everybody has gotten too comfortable. And everybody involved in this needs to bear their fair share of the blame. I agree with you both completely. And then also you take into consideration, like, if it's this quote unquote honor system, how many times in everyday life has somebody been in your space and sneezed or coughed and you're like, wait, are you sick? And they're like, oh, no, it's allergies. That's the hard part with this. And it's not that they I'm not saying that they're lying. It's that's the hard part that comes with COVID specifically is that it affects everyone so differently that it may just appear as if it is actually allergies. You may not get a super bad case where you're like, oh, no, this is definitely something more. And that's the gray area that opens the door for it to affect somebody in a greater way than it did maybe the first person who had it and came into that space. And this is not something that is specific to the Suns. This is a league wide thing. We saw reporting come out recently that came out during the second round. Oh, it's resurfacing now that Luca had flu like symptoms in game one and two, but he's fine now. As well, you brought up Al Horford. We also saw the Warriors. Steve Kerr also went out with COVID. Like, this is not specific to the Suns. This is a league issue that they should have had something in place 
to like a plan or a system to be able to address this in the best way possible to keep everyone safe while also having a really good product on the floor. Because I understand that tons of money is at stake, people's jobs, jobs, like I get that, but you should come in with a plan in place to avoid all of this fallout that comes with it. Yeah. And I'm sorry, anybody that's trying to act like that had absolutely no impact on the suns uh, is ignoring the reality of what this virus is, you know, and what it, what it does to people, regardless of if you're a professional athlete or a normal, you know, a normal everyday human being, this thing takes its toll. And if you're expected to perform at peak physical condition, to be able to do the things that you ask an NBA athlete to do, uh, you know, that's not going to happen if you have COVID. It's just not. So it did play a part in this. Again, it's not the only excuse. I know it's not the only reason. It's not an excuse, but it is a factor in why, you know, I assume game six and game seven, we're making a lot of assumptions in this, but that that, that was such a weird drop off from what we saw all season and even earlier in this season, I just, or this series, I don't, I don't understand how people can just be like, not an issue, not, not a reason because it is, it's, it's all a factor in this. Absolutely. And it it affects everybody differently, like you said. And even if it's just, you know, flu-like symptoms or just being sick, like there's a reason Michael Jordan's flu game is exalted the way that it is because it was a really impressive performance given how ill he was feeling in that game. Like, again, I'm not using this as the chief excuse the Suns lost. Like we said, they got beat four out of five times to close that series. But at the same time, it is definitely a factor. And it, we, you know, we've been struggling for weeks to figure out what happened in that series. This isn't all of it, but this definitely contextualizes things a little bit better for me. But again, it it is ridiculous that the Suns are being pegged as the only team that's doing this. Like, the Suns are the only team hiding that they're feeling sick or that they had guys test for COVID. The player that tested for COVID was after game seven. And that was the only player that tested for COVID. And that's the reason why apparently we didn't get exit interviews and why they were done over zoom was to try to contain that. But, you know, it, again, everybody here needs to own up. And this is a thing that the league has to address because it's ridiculous. They're playing games every other day, the Western conference finals and semifinals games every other day. And you're traveling, you know, two to three times as the season or as the series wears on, like that's potential super spreader stuff there. And it's also like players are signing autographs they're interacting with fans again. Again, we just got too comfortable with where we're at with this virus. And unfortunately, it just confirmed what we've known all along. The Phoenix Suns are freaking cursed. (laughs) One thousand percent. At the end of the day, just remember, if you're scrolling on Twitter and you see somebody with a blue check mark trying to blame the Suns or use this as an excuse to trash talk the Suns, the mute button is free. Use it. The block button is free. Use it or close the app and just go do something else. Don't oh. let it fester inside of you. Don't let it create some animosity or anything because that negativity needs to start slowing down. Like We also need to do it ourselves. We just need to start distancing ourselves from negativity on the internet well and click on that profile i'm going to bet the location says dallas texas if it is so yeah well i think this is a good time to remind everybody that COVID 19 is not gone it is still here and it is spreading just as it was uh over the last handful of years so uh just a reminder to stay safe and healthy COVID 19 vaccines are free for everyone five and older those 12 and older are also now eligible for a booster. Visit azhealth.gov slash find vaccine for a location near you. You guys ready for a screenshot presented by yeah. Arizona Department of Health Services? Yes, please. <laughs> this is actually a really fun one, and I like this topic. Uh, Devin Booker and Chris Paul were listed in Forbes' top 50 highest paid athletes. So Devin came in at in 39th place with $39.9 million. Chris Paul came in in 40 third place with $39.1 million. Does this surprise you that they're in the top 50? It actually surprises me that Book is ahead of CP3 because, you know, CP3 has some of his established long-term national, uh, you know, Right, like with the commercials, you would think he'd be making a lot more. 
Yeah, I mean, I get that he had the decrease in salary with the restructure of his contract, but I was surprised that it wasn't flip-flopped with those two. But Devin getting that national attention after the championship uh, or the, the finals run last year and, uh, you know, getting that – what was it? What was the beer? It was a Corona ad, Corona. Coco 5. He's got that uh, NFT – a deal with autograph.io i think that it started a national campaign so books starting to be in that in that national discussion too uh, and nike as well so right yeah i'm actually not really surprised by that because i know his salary for the next upcoming seasons more than chris paul by a not a substantial amount but pretty sizable corona ad all the different book projects that he's got going on like he's, he's finally made it so that's that is kind of cool to see him that high on the list I agree. And it's it's neat to see quite a few NBA athletes on this, too. There's a there's a bunch of athletes when I looked at this list and I was like, oh, look at you go. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> like I didn't would have never, never guessed. You know what I mean? Um, I always feel like soccer players are at the top of all of these lists. So if you're looking to make money as a professional athlete, it seems like soccer is the sport that you should get into. I came in. I guess big, big money. I came in at 505 for all my broom ball deals. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that was shocking. So, All right. So if you guys were to make $39 million in one year, what would you do or what would you buy? I would pay off my house. I'd pay off my parents' house. I'd pay off my sister's house. Like, I, I would I would do that. I'm not going to go live in large, uh, you know, but uh, then I'd hire a professional uh, a personal trainer and work out all the time because I got no, I got no other worries. So I might as well just hit the gym constantly. Are you saying you're, you're, di you're going to ditch us here? No, I'd still show up for one hour a day. <laughs> I'd just be hitting the gym the other 23, you know, like they expect DeAndre Ayton to do. So gotcha, I'll just be gotcha. doing that. <laughs> oh man. If I had that kind of money, I would definitely buy myself a big house with like a pool and a swim up bar, like an indoor basketball court, like my own, like at home movie theater room. I could just watch movies and play my video games. And then I would probably, I'd probably buy my parents and my sister new places. I'd buy all of you guys new cars because I think you would all deserve it. Yes, Gerald. <laughs> Gerald, then, you don't, you don't already Gerald's have all homie. those things in your home? I do not. No, oh, well, that's a disappointment. And then I would definitely continue to just cover the suns because I love doing what I do. And I would never have to worry about money again. So that would be fantastic. I, I would build a pretty cool home studio, too, because the walk-in closet doesn't cut it when we do these remote <laughs> shows. I'd have this palatial. I'd make the, I'd make the PH&X studios look lame with what I'd buy uh, for my home studio. So. Love that. I'm with you guys. The house thing, that's a natural, like, got to take care of that first with all your people and everything. But I think I would actually plan, I would take a hiatus for a year and just travel all year long. I would go to every single place that's on my bucket list, add mm -hmm. more places to that bucket list just to cross them off. I feel like I would travel as far and as often as I could with uh, that type of money. We got some really fun ones in the comments. Uh, P-Dog <laughs> said, I would buy uh, 39 million bags of hot Cheetos, LLJK. I feel like you'd only be able to get like 15 million maybe because they're like, <laughs> they're not a dollar each, but I like where your head's at with that one. Jay said, I'd pay the luxury tax for the team. <laughs> also not a bad option. I don't Good know that it would Jay. be, a, you need to work out the return value there. Like what are you getting in, in return for your investment here? Um, mm -hmm. So that you're not just paying all this money without getting something in return. Alex said, I'd get Chipotle in a house. <laughs> Love that. I mean, that's a lot of Chipotle. You're going to, you're going to have to get some, uh, some, you know, stomach surgery eventually too. If you're, if you're just focusing solely on 39 million in Chipotle. So. And then Daniel asked Gerald, do you know, when you said you would buy us all cars, does that include the girthlings? I'd, I'd drop you all 200 bucks. How about that in the chats? There you go. <laughs> Hit me up in the chat. I'll give you all 200 bucks. Make, be, to be clear, if he had 39 million, not right if now. If had 39 million, yes. Yes. If, if and when Gerald reaches that 39 million a year mark, we all have proof that he's going to drop us some money or a car. So you heard it here first. Um, Espo, I have a question for you. How much okay. money is the most 
or how what's the most amount of money that you've made on the DraftKings Sportsbook app? In one bet? Yeah, in one bet. What's the highest uh, payout you've had? A little over a grand on Jake Crowder to hit uh, first bucket. That Crowder's cash club in uh, in December paid uh, pretty damn well. I'll tell you that much. Jay, uh, Jay bought my wife's Christmas present. Jay bought me uh, some new electronics uh, for the house. Uh, Jay took care of me back then. So uh, so I took personal uh, personal umbrage to the F.J. Crowder chant in, in New Orleans because uh, Jay funded me. The F was fund when it came to Jay Crowder <laughs> for me. How much was the bet that you had to put down to win over a grand? I think I put about 100 down on it. Okay. I started small. I was betting like $10 on Jay to uh, to get the first shot and I'd win. And so I, I kept upping it because I was like, well, crap, this keeps working. So I got into that hundy a game range. And uh, yeah, I think I cleared almost five grand just by uh, by betting on Jay first basket. So. That's amazing. I love that. I mean, I remember you telling us throughout the season, but I just it didn't stick that they was that high of a number this uh, whole time. That's awesome. Girthquake in the chat said they won $2,400 on a game seven NFL parlay. NFL? NBA? That's, imp that's impressive. Game seven? Yeah. Oh, on a, a sorry. Seven I read this, my bad. I was like, I'm confused. <laughs> that was my bad. Let me try again. Girthquake said they won $2,400 on a seven game NFL parlay. That makes impressive. a lot more sense. That, I'm that's pretty a lot low of compared legs to you guys. On parlay. Yeah, I'm pretty low compared to you guys. I've only won 250, and that's because I used one of my free bets when I signed up for DraftKings on a futures bet for Monty to win Coach of the Year, and it hit. And I completely forgot about it. And like two weeks after he won, I was like, wait, didn't I make a bet on that? And I logged into my app, and I was like, yes, I'm going to buy a new pair of shoes. <laughs> I'm just going to say this. My campaign to be most improved player, I didn't yeah. win that one. Bad futures bet. Nice. But if you guys want to get in on the action, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code PHNX. Make any $5 bet during the NBA Finals and get $150 in free bets instantly. That's promo code PHNX. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Espo, what's our pick of the week? Do you have a good one for us that we can yeah, win some fat money I'm, on? I'm going all out on the Celtics tonight. I'm taking money line Celtics tonight. Okay. I just I feel like they're gonna win uh, at home. Take that two one lead. So, so that's my bet. I, it's, it's simple. It's not sexy. It's not weird. I didn't go into uh, curling or Quidditch or anything bizarre in the app. I, I stuck with NBA, but I'm going uh, straight out uh, on the uh, straight up on that Celtics game. So. Well, there you have it. That's your pick of the week. If you place that bet and you hit, also let us know tomorrow because we want to celebrate with you. Guess who else might be getting a really big bag here pretty soon? Who's that? Gerald? <laughs> Kevin Young. <laughs> Monty's assistant head coach. Uh, yes. He is rumored to be in the running for the head coach position over at the Utah Jazz, correct? Mm-hmm. That is well, thanks. I, sorry, Good night, thought, everybody. <laughs> sorry, I thought you had more <laughs> on that. Look, um, yeah, no, this is this is cool for Kevin Young, less cool for the Suns and their fan base, obviously, because you never want to lose a good assistant. Um, and for those Suns fans who are not as familiar with Kevin Young and his work, um, Monty at various points of the year shouted him out for different things that he does. He was kind of I mean, he was the associate head coach, so he was basically Monty's right-hand man for a lot of the year, um, basically kind of filling the Willie Green role from last year. Um, you know, Monty credited him with being really good at helping him make adjustments in games based on things that he sees. Um, he was kind of his go-to guy as far as asking when to challenge, when not to challenge based on what he saw from the replay on the first replay. Um, and he's also good about getting on guys about shooting the ball more and, and kind of judging their shot quality. Um, and he always has this, uh, Monty calls it a then what approach on offense as far as, okay, if they stop this or if this breaks down, then what, what do we do next? And it's part of the reason why the Suns had so many counters uh, in their offense, so many little tweaks and nuances that made them effective during the regular season at least. So it is pretty cool that he's getting this, opportunity to interview for the jazz job 
Um, obviously, you don't want to see a good assistant leave, but Monty has always talked about, you know, it's, it kind of comes with the territory. When you have a good coaching staff, you want to be in a position where your guys are coveted. Maybe you don't want to lose them. He talked about he didn't like losing Willie Green, and it was weird seeing him on another team. But he's obviously happy for them because he's close with these guys. And he said, our model here, our leadership goal is to produce leaders, not followers. And we try to do that with coaches and players. He said that after he came back from his COVID absence when Kevin Young had to fill in for a few games for Monty as the head coach. Um, and he was basically saying, we want to groom these guys. We want to see them succeed. And when those opportunities arise, it is a cool thing, but it would be a blow to the Suns coaching staff if he were to get that job. There are a lot of candidates being interviewed. He's only in the first stage of the process. Um, but that that is cool and also kind of sucky if you're a Suns fan. Story yeah, of our I mean, lives. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, yeah, this would be the second year in a row losing that uh, losing that main assistant, like you said, Gerald. And it, it makes me wonder, like I know how close Monty uh, and Willie Green were. It won't be that kind of level in terms of personal relationship, but it does impact uh, the way they coach a team, like uh, the, the way the guys are familiar with with that lead assistant and and how that operates and i think that was an under uh an under talked about aspect at times uh this year in terms of rotational decisions uh, you know different uh, different things where monty used willie as a sounding board uh in, in that previous season uh, to perfection had to get used to kevin young this year uh it, it worked as they went along and then if you have to make that change yet again going into to next year, it's another thing that Monty has to work through that isn't just a, a given, you know, and I think that makes it, uh, you know, it's not the end all be all, obviously Monty makes, makes these calls, but you're only as good as those that you're surrounded by in a lot of cases and having to find another guy to be your number two uh, is, is just a pain in the ass, quite frankly, in an off season that uh, has already started off to be a giant pain in the ass. So. Not to mention, I mean, we had discussed this a couple of weeks ago when we did like our quote unquote Monty Williams episode, but I think there was a bigger impact on this team losing Willie Green than any of us had really considered or thought about. And, and I think that was a really big blow to this coaching staff and this organization as a whole not to say that he was somebody that is um, irreplaceable necessarily, but it was obvious that he was a very good coach. He was very good at communicating with the players. I know we had brought up the fact that he is so closely, not, not very far removed from his playing time that allowed for better relationship with the guys or maybe to understand a little bit more. And obviously Willie is a great coach because he got the head coaching position uh, with the Pelicans. Like He wouldn't have gotten that if he wasn't deserving of that. So this, this is a tough blow when you do lose somebody who is so valuable and brings so much to the table. But at the same time, like you never want to hold somebody back from an opportunity that can better themselves or their lives. So if Kevin Young does get this job, congrats to him. I hope he's successful in that. But um, I hope if he does, we also are able to find a solid uh, replacement for him as well moving forward. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys. Uh, we have something special for you. We so do. we don't have an ad read oh, roulette God. wheel. <laughs> but what we did do was Gerald and I got together and came up with something that Espo should have to read. And uh, Espo, sorry, but we voted and you lost. So real fun <laughs> here. You have I to got read. I up on because I won broom ball and you <laughs> guys sucked. And now I got to do Exactly. We're being petty. So this is what Urgent. we get. This is our losing prize or whatever, our consolation prize. Uh, you have to read OGs as Batman. As, as Batman. Oh, let yeah. me, <clears throat> let me uh, clear the throat there. Let's see if we can do this. <laughs> oh, no. This is, uh, you, th you, thought, you thought Cookie Monster was bad. Wait oh, no. for Batman. Oh, no. If you're interested in trying the amazingly delicious variety of OGs brands has to offer, you got to check out ogsbrands.com. You can try out that indica that I like when I need to relax and sleep during the day because Batman is nocturnal because I'm vengeance. That's right. <clears throat> this is tougher than I thought. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> 
<clears throat> you want to get up for one of those great fights you have with one of your mortal enemies like the Joker or Bane. Yeah, try that sativa from OGs. And now I'm going into Randy Macho. <laughs> I don't know what this is. But... This one's not going to have a voice tomorrow. I think this one's I... going to mess you up more than Cookie Monster. I... <laughs> <laughs> Do you need water or a lozenge? No, I'm trying to remember some of the lines from Batman so I could uh, do do some justice. I'm not wearing hockey pants. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't wearing hockey pants when I played broom ball, and now I have a bruised knee. <laughs> if, so if you're interested in trying amazingly delicious flavors that OG has to offer, head to ogsbrands.com. That's O-G-E-E-Z brands.com to find OGs near you. <laughs> well done, Aspo. I Usually I do a better Batman. I don't know. That was a, that was a little weak today. I'm not going to lie. Hey, Cheerston in the chat said, why am I wildly impressed with Espo's performance on this? You're I, getting kudos all around, Espo. So I have a, I have a fun story about this. Uh, you okay. actually were right in my wheelhouse, surprisingly. But uh, back in 2012, when uh, The Dark Knight came out, my wife and I go to the movie, and, uh, and Christian Bale obviously is Batman. And one of the first scenes, uh, he does the voice, and my my wife, uh, she might have been my no, yeah, she was my wife. Uh, turns to me and goes, uh, "I wasn't, I wasn't thinking. Oh, was I dating somebody else? I was trying to go. Oh, were we married or not at that point?" But she goes, "How does he do that voice?" And without missing a beat, I turn around and go, "What voice?" And do the Batman voice in the theater, and it scared the crap out of her. And uh, so, so that's been a running joke with uh, with her and my family is that that I just bust that out every once in a while. So thanks for picking one in my wheelhouse there. I appreciate it. Next time we'll have to be better and and think these through. I mean, I we should have known if you can do Cookie Monster, you probably can do a pretty good Batman, Gerald. We yeah. got to be better tomorrow. So I yeah, imagine cool. that Cookie Monster, mm, me like Cookie, is really <laughs> just Batman. I'm Batman when he's high on sativa. So it's Batman. I'm Batman. But then he goes, mm, <laughs> me want Cookie because he's hungry, right? So it, it's really they're really in the same family. There, it's Batman with the without the angst is what Cookie Monster is. So, so you combine Batman, Yoda, and OGs, and you get the Cookie Monster is what you're saying. Mm, me like Cookie, I'm Batman. That's right. Uh, I love the darkness. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's no something words. like that. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Amazing job, Espo. Really proud of you. Now, Espo, you have a surprise for all of us, right? Uh, yes, now I'm going to do my Bane impersonation. Oh. Nobody cared who I was until I put on the mask. Uh, oh, no, that God. wasn't the surprise, but uh, <laughs> no, we actually do. Uh, we have a very cool new series that uh, Chirsten Cell is, is doing called the story, the first 30 episodes were about the coyotes and, and their search for a home called Wandering the Desert. But she did a fantastic one off uh, that came out earlier today that you can find on our feed or subscribe to the story wherever you get podcasts. It is a, a look at uh, people who have been impacted by Al McCoy, both fans and career wise uh, Cheerston scraped the bottom of the barrel for one interview. She had me on, but she had three other amazing guests. And this is a clip from the show. If we can run that chain. You know, I think uh, when all is said and done, Al is the greatest, uh, not only sportscaster, but broadcaster that has ever talked on the airwaves or been on television here in Arizona. And, I, and I'm not uh, looking down or I'm not uh, ignoring or, you know, just you just put all things in perspective. Somebody who's been with the team for 50 years, uh, there's no greater broadcaster in Arizona. Uh, I don't think it's even close with what Al has done. Uh, I think that's how much he's respected, uh, how much respect he deserves. And uh, it's a comfort. You know, I get that a lot. I've been doing it 25 years with the Diamondbacks, and uh, you just take it back to 50 years and figure the timetable. He's touched so many, and no other broadcaster has done that in the history of this state. So 
he's the best there is, uh, is the best there ever will be. And uh... yeah, so check that out. Uh, it was spectacular. I'm very happy to be a part of that, and I'm lucky to help executive produce that show with Cheerston. Uh, it's uh, one of my passion projects here. It's in great hands with Cheerston, and I hope you all check it out because uh, it's it's really good. It's uh, in-depth. We like to have a lot of fun here, but this is what we call reporting and, and <laughs> really uh, a, a documentary-style look at things in Phoenix sports. So check it out. It's called The Story with Cheerston Susell. Uh, it's PHNX's The Story with Cheerston Susell. You can find that wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, also, uh, I want to recognize Summer Radcliffe, who made a comment uh, that she said uh, she almost thought I was trying to do a Ron Wolfley impersonation. I actually think Ron Wolfley is Batman when he takes the sativa, right? You got, I'm Batman. <laughs> and then you got, tap into the rage tree, my brothers. It's it's very much all the same. They're all in the same family uh, of voices. So you can really get into all of them. So Wait, when so you does, mask, go ahead. Where where does Bill Walton fit in? Because that sounded very Bill Walton for a second too. Phenomenal, uh, <laughs> Richard Jefferson. Uh, you can get in there. I think that's when uh, when you mix wine with the sativa, you get uh, you get Bill Walton. Okay. Uh, or LSD. Let's be honest. That was Bill Walton's uh, drug of choice to expand his mind. One of my favorite. Uh, uh, one of my favorite all-time interviews ever it was Bill Walton, uh, and it's crazy to me that you you can actually go from Batman to Cookie Monster to Ron Wolfley to Bill Walton, all depending on what route you go down. They're all very much uh, much alike in there. You know, I learned so much from this episode about you, Espo. I realized where Ad Read Roulette originated. My, you my can do mind. you can do like 18 different voices. So this is right <laughs> up your alley. Like you're the pro at this. And then me, Gerald, and Saul are like the noobs who are getting embarrassed night in and night out. <laughs> I, I can do more Ron Wolfley. Are you talking to me? <laughs> Lindsay <Okay>. Smith, <laughs> respect the podcast, respect the wheel. Of uh, the ad read roulette, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty so, good. It was yeah. pretty good, solid I option. Right, I, I love Ron, Ron's a dear friend, known him for years. But uh, you gotta have that. I can do Lon Babby too, but I don't think most people remember him, and that's not in the Cookie Monster, Batman, uh, Wolfly, uh, Walton category. That's a totally different category that you have to get into to get there, though. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us for some fun conversation today. We will be back tomorrow at 2 p.m. as usual. Uh, we appreciate your support and we hope that you go listen to the story uh, by Cheerston Susell and support her as well. The same thing we ask you to do for us. We hope you do for her too. Rate, review, subscribe, all the fun things. Until tomorrow, you can follow me on Twitter at Lindsay Smith AZ. You can follow Gerald at Gerald Borgay. And of course, you can follow Espo at Espo. Espo, take us home. Just remember, if you say it out loud, they're not just voices in your head anymore. Ahoy, <laughs> hoy. hoy. <laughs>